to stand on our nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And Commissioner Williams, please lead us into prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you have granted us. Father, be with us as we do the business of Mills County. Guide us and direct us in all that we do. Father, bless the land with some room. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, good morning again, everybody. We'll have a forum. We'll discuss the eclipse later on, Sheriff, and whatnot. Uh, commissioners, you'll look at number two, review national minutes of March 25th, 2024, please. Hopefully, item number two, we'll get this straight this morning, Judge, on how many cubic yards and stuff we have. Okay. And I think Carlos Pass is supposed to be here this morning, too. He's supposed to be here, yes. I don't see him yet. And again, that's an approximate answer. I don't think we have to worry. I mean, being exact figure is kind of an approximate figure. That's all I have on the minutes. I'll make the motion to accept the minutes as is. Okay, motion's been made by Commissioner Head, accept the minutes of March 25th. Second. Second's been made by Commissioner Williams. All those in favor of approving the minutes of March 25th, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Number three, audience with individuals. We do have individual Miss Lynetta Barnett, but she can speak when we get down to the 1888 jail. I don't think there's anyone else here to speak. So moving on, review and act on accounts payables, number four. So just a question on page eight, uh, the road and bridge special. Just a little information on those three things that are listed. Does anybody have any knowledge of those three? There's more service in there after that than major. More service center was that sleep during console sleep on the night. Yes, sir. I thought we'd already done that. I thought so too. But that already went through payments. It was what I didn't hear what said summer. It's outstanding. We we called her. Double check because we have this credit, so we wanted to make sure we had everything paid. Yeah, on SMS. Credit. Yes, that's the credit we're trying to back to compare to the cost. Because if you don't bring me back those credit receipts from SNS, like every time you return something and they give you a credit receipt, it's the same thing as an invoice. I can't apply it to where it goes. So this has built up for over maybe a year. I just chose to apply it back to 15. Okay. So we can use it up and it'll be gone off the statement and they won't ask you about it if you wanna apply it to your invoice. I never saw a bill on that track for console. He said he'd send the bill. So I don't know if he ever which okay and do i need to come down and sign it that's what i'm asking if we just it, is it correct that it's under a yeah. yes okay yes. i think we're good yep. yes and then uh no other question i have page five piece of two Okay. 
first that you left there. Mm -hmm. Just was curious about it. Ah, it's a 2016, it's got 1400 hours on it. Robert Packer. Collaborating, okay. And do we? I mean, that's that's a little bit more, huh? That's a little bit more than what, or a little less than what Dale was paying. Yeah, I went and looked at it and everything. I mean. I don't know. I mean, it's just it ran good. It ran good, and everything else. I mean, um, did a little background. I can get parts for it in, in San Antonio. So I was just kind of. It's a foreign made. Well, they're all they're all they're all foreign made. Just about. Um, basically, uh, when I talked to uh, the company in San Antonio. They basically said that uh, about the only thing that's actually foreign is the body parts. It's got a Cummings engine in it. Um, all those, all the working mechanisms are you can get just about you know around here, you know around the United States, easy. Uh, he said basically the only thing that's actually foreign is the body parts. He said, but other than that, he said the bearings are all universal. Uh, he said it's got a Cummings motor in it, and he said so, you know. So I mean, because I was worried about that, because the when you take a picture of the plate, it's more foreign language than anything. And he said, well, look at the rest of them. Look at your hand when you. He said they're all foreign. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, that's what they Caterpillar's not going to be that way. So that's just what I was asking. Okay, that's all the questions I had. Okay. But we'll make a motion on this. I make a motion that we approve the council table. Motion has been made by Commissioner Williams to approve the council table. Second. Second's been made by Commissioner Head. Any other discussion? All those in favor of approving the council table say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Gentlemen, going down to the consent agenda to go through your packets. And the only thing that's not in the package is the facilities report. So if, if and when we get to making a motion on that, uh, we will make a motion not to include the facilities report because it's not in the package. We'll get that in there next time. Summer on the quarterly investment report. The road and bridge special. That rate that so it was at a significant higher risk. It just matured. Well, I saw that you just did one that was matured, so that really helped. It just matured, so yes, that's what it was. Thank you. What page was that on, Jason? That is the Mills County Quarterly Investment Report. Um, Judge, have you gotten any word from the appraisal district on the tax, the tax balance that is collected? Still no, showing that it's, it's pretty low at 95%. No, it was I believe it's 97%. That's what I'm talking to what they're looking at. I know, I know. Ports is 95. Yeah, so. I haven't visited with them about the last week or 10 days. Uh, I can reach out to them today after our meeting. Okay. That, that's you know, I'll get back with you. That would be more than what's in yeah. line. 
because we base our budget on a 99, I believe. So I'll reach out and get that information uh, to you, Commissioner Williams. Maybe this is so an old report. So. Okay. Well, just in the previous years, it's it's usually in April we're pushing that 97, 98 percent. So, and I guess they're uh, they doing a little power. The power company is still in litigation. Yes, uh, uh, I think I may have mentioned previous time. Uh, I listened to the uh, to our deal in the Texas Supreme Court, and it may be a month as far as the earliest, it may be up to four months. What I mean, before we hear anything. Um, you know, I'm not on Tom Jeffrey's report, but that we spent a lot of time in the Canadian. Oh, yes. Good job. Yeah. Yeah, the two 12 hour days, the sheriff's office this week. Yeah, he's uh, there at the Mercy Operating Center, like many others, all weekend. <clears throat> I have no other questions. I like a motion that we approve the consent agenda. Minus the, Minus the uh, facilities report. Okay, motion has been made by Commissioner Williams to approve the consent agenda minus the facilities report. Second has been made by Commissioner Barton in there of the discussion. All those in favor of approving the uh, motion by Commissioner Williams, excluding the facilities report, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, moving on to action agenda number five, consider an act on your local cooperation contract for failure to appear FTA problem with the Texas Department of Public Safety. Kim Wesson, you want, I mean, Kim, Kim Wesson, Kim Avins, you want to come up and uh, prep anything? Uh, commissioners, your packet. This is a, oh, they did this, what, three or four years ago. And Kim, you might be able to prep a little bit more on this. <laughs> So this, uh, good morning, gentlemen. This is a Texas Department of Public Safety, and what it is, it's a notice of interlocal cooperation contract for failure to appear at FTA program. So when someone pays a ticket, um, or they don't pay the ticket, ten dollars of it goes, uh, they collect this, and then they have to be clear with the FTA program. And uh, so they've got a vendor they need, but it it is uh, in order for them to get their license. They get report. It used to be like a $30 fee, it's $10 FTA report. They've been doing it for a long while. But uh, this is something the legislature has to have. I think you have a letter in front of you, and the, it's just a standardized. It's not anything, something that uh, is new, or I may say new, but it's just, it's been, we've been doing it all along, but they have to have, uh, like we did the last note agreement, but this just has to be signed and uh, by either the county judge or myself, I don't think of that. But, um, so it's an important wide service. It's just awesome with the Texas EPS. Okay. So it's just kind of a, not anything special or different or something kind of, you know, brought in. Okay. Commissioner, any questions for Ms. A. Vince? That is, is this the actual contract that you're going to sign today? Copy. Do they have a copy? Yes, they should have a copy. So, so, are so we, they, we need a some of this is not. Completely filled out. Are we going to get that filled out before yeah, we sign it? We bring it before y'all before we put yeah. the signature and then you can fill out. That's that's okay. Okay. Uh, any other questions? I'll make a motion that we approve the interlocal cooperation contract to failure to appear program through the DPS. Thanks. My motion. Second by Commissioner Williams. Second by Commissioner Williams. Any other discussion? All those in favor of approving the interlocal cooperation contract, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you, Kim. Have a good day. Okay, number six, consider an act to establish grievance committee of nine citizens for the statute 152.014. So the last year is the first time I did this personally. I know we've been doing it for several years. I'll just read a few things regarding the salary grievance committee. Uh, chapter 152 of the local government code creates a salary grievance process for elected county and precinct officials 
to challenge their salaries, expenses, and allowances as set out in the proposed budget. So through the clerk's office, the names of each person who served on the grand jury during the preceding calendar year, there's a separate pieces of paper of these individuals thrown into this old hat. Mr. Parker, make sure it's a hat there. So uh, what we're going to do, the names have been placed in this hat, and the county judge draws an appropriate number of names to select the public members of the salary grievance committee. Uh, the county judge may repeat the process and draw a list for alternates. So uh, these members who we draw will be uh, serving on the committee until the later of the end of the fiscal year in which the person was appointed or the time the committee takes a final vote on the last grievance for which a public hearing was held. So uh, Ms. Sonia, anything I left out or anything, I'll draw nine names and then nine alternate names, correct? Number six is actually considered an act someone needs to move to approve. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll do the motion. We've got to approve this first. So I, I jumped a little bit there. So number six, uh, I'll make a motion that we establish the salary grievance committee of nine citizens. A second has been made by Commissioner Parton. All those in favor of establishing a salary grievance committee say aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Yeah, that was number six. Now, the selection of the grievance committee members, which I've read previously, and anything I need to add to that. Okay, so I'm going to draw nine names and then nine alternates. I'll read the names off. First name is Leslie Hammond. Give me a short those little tags are there, so I don't lose them. Second name is Karen Jones. Third name, Richard Gilliland. I think I pronounced that right. Fourth name, Deidre Bryant. Fifth name, Rachel Wright. Sixth name, Nancy Spears. Seventh name, Laura Wilson. Eighth name, Tracy Thompson. And ninth name, Timothy Dornell. Now I'll also do a list of nine alternates in case one of these cannot fulfill their duties. First alternate name is Rudolph, excuse me, Randolph Doyer. Second alternate name is William Genis, J-E-A-N-E-S, Genis, Genis. Third name, Stephen Geltz. Fourth name, Rocky Welch. Fifth alternate name, Richard Covington. Sixth, James Mason. Seventh alternate, Sarah Adams. Eighth alternate, Wesley Schmidt. And last alternate name. Oops. That's it. Uh, Magali Morris, M-O-R-E-S. Magali, M-A-G-A-L-L-Y, Morris, M-O-R-E-S. Amazing this, isn't that, baby? All right. So those are the, the last ones I read were the nine alternates. I'm going to want those, but I do have them, but I am going to want them. Okay. So those are the selection. Do, I, do we need to make a motion, Sonia, to approve the one names I've drawn or anything? I don't think so. Uh, okay. So we approved the grievance committee. We, we drew the names. And I believe we got everything taken care of. So moving on to number eight. Consider an act of moving the Mills County Historical Commission to the 1888 jail 
Uh, good morning. This is Lynetta Barnett. And Lynetta, I'll, I'll prep things up first and uh, then you can take over. Uh, Lynetta uh, is on the committee. She's the chairperson, president, whatever your title is, from Mills County Historical Commission. And you've been doing that for a good many years, doing a great job. Uh, there's how many members are there of us? 12? Nine. Nine. And uh, County Attorney Hale's on there, uh, got a good group in there. And as you all know, Commissioners, we've been discussing the 1888 jail quite a bit, quite extensively. And we all agree we want someone in there. Uh, there's some issues regarding if we had put the county attorney in there, it was boring. The expense is going to be extremely high. Uh, I visited again with the Mills County uh, Historical Commission, and the group took a vote, and it's a unanimous vote that we could all move over to the 1888 jail. And uh, uh, I'll turn over to you now, Lynette. Go ahead. Okay, it's been a while since I've been here with you, and uh, I'll try to be brief, although it's not my thing. But <laughs> uh, look at your resolution. I gave most people. There may be a few who don't take them. They're right here if you need one. Uh, this resolution was passed on the 14th day of May, 2018. And we had already been working on the jail a little while before that. Uh, this was the suggestion of Layton Black. He was once a representative from our county. That we write up this resolution and post it and sign it. And I, to make it one page long, I have cut off the signatures of the commissioners who signed it. Although this one and this one did so. These two were not on there at the time. And the judge at that time was Kirk Full. But if you look, it says resolution on rehabilitation. It was not a reconstruction. It was not a renovation. It was a rehabilitation of the first public building in Mills County. That building was built before the courthouse. It was a couple of years prior. And for those of you who are newer to the county, there's it pretty well gives you a history if you read through the whereas clauses. See, there's March 1887, uh, September. The judge at that time, who did who was the organizing officer out of Brown County was my Uncle Rob. Uh, the one, the judge in this county, once the county was formed, was his great granddad. I think, I mean, there may be an extra great in there. But anyway, most of us have all been around a while. The sheriff who worked in that building was Jason's granddad. And, uh, Everybody, the pardons, the rights have been in this county for many, many years. And they and, were in the jail. No. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the pardons were among the first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you will look on down, uh, it was built by J by JT, that says I, I think, but anyway, JT Noise of uh, Diebold Steel. The cells in the upper story. The other things were done by uh, a ditchy prices there. There's green and nickels of land passes. Notice that the prices were much smaller in those days. Yeah, but I would think that those were pretty big prices actually compared to the cost of the times. And here's J.B. Dumas uh, did the the architectural work. Okay, now this is the paragraph I really want you to look at. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the 1888 jail should be preserved and maintained by Mills County Commissioner's Court in cooperation with the Mills County Historical Commission for the purpose, okay, the purpose of historical education of the local citizenry and the people of the state of Texas. Okay, so I'm going to talk about some new ideas that I've had as to how we can use it for the education of the public. 
even though the Mills County Historical Commission is the one who made if, if you agree to it, move into that jail. Now, now let's do some math. Under okay. the diagram, it is not a perfect diagram, believe me. You will not fix it. 15 and 15 do not add to 30 and so forth. Okay, let's look at the outside dimensions, and I do not know how they built the thing. I guess I just lined up their rock and then I don't know. And how they lifted that rock in those days in 1887, I have no idea. I'd love to know, but I don't. But anyway, the front is not square. If you've dealt with old buildings, you know that they're never square and they're never level. But anyway, this one is more level than it is square. The front uh, facade is 29 feet. The sides are more or less 38. Now, actually, that is not a very large building. Uh, there's not too much room in the usable space. The entry, of course, is not usable space for whatever you can do with, except as an entry. <clears throat> uh, I have marked on my paper, if you have a pen, you may want to write, that first little space there, 13 by 7, is the entry. Okay. That next room with a fireplace in it, and that fireplace is the black part, and the gray part is the concrete that's in front of the fireplace, you know, so the sparks don't hit the wood floor. Okay, that is what we're thinking of as a meeting room. Because it's a little farther from the street and you don't get quite as much noise from the trucks on the highway and so forth. Uh, it's not, was not a very good office for a county attorney because if you'll notice there's three doors going out of it. There's two windows, three doors. Uh, privacy was quite an issue, would be an issue for, for someone who needs it. We don't need privacy, so it's not a problem to us. Okay, that room is about 15 by 15. And that still, you cannot get very many people in there. I'm going to assume if you put a table in the middle, I, I can do it. <laughs> this is what Don and I have for breakfast, lunch, and uh, Supper <laughs> in the way I look at this and think, okay, if our table seats this many people, and in the present table we have seats 10, although they're pretty crowded at that, but you can seat 10. But then if you sit in the chairs and move them back, that's another two feet per person at least. So you can see that that would quickly take up all your space right here. Uh, but anyway, I think the other choice would be to put your chairs around and either use or bypass the door spaces. And uh, I think you could get 15 or 16 people in there. Your speaker could use a lectern or something. I'm just saying. Okay, move back over here to the room that's on the street side. 13.5, and don't ask me why this is 13.7 up here and 13.5 down here. I think the wall runs straighter than that. <laughs> Not too sure about that. At the times 21.9. Okay, I have it marked on mine as display or lecture room. And again, it's not going to hold very many people or children or whoever you might have as a group. I was thinking of school classes or something like that that we could be finding uh, for educational purposes. I think maybe 16 children. We've already put a great big one of those old roll top desks in there and it took up that whole corner just about. Uh, <laughs> that thing took a lot of space. But I think uh, you could get 15 or 16 children if you had, I don't know how many they have in elementary classes now. 
Did they have the 22 that we had in the day surveillance? Oh, usually not that big. Be. Might be They're not that big. Okay, well, that'd be good then. But you could, if you had more, put 15 in this room and 15 in the other room and have two presenters and something like that. Okay, and this other little room here is not really quite that big. I don't know, and the cabinet over in the corner is not in there anymore. But anyway, you can see there's not a huge amount of space, usable space in here. Around 750 to 800 feet at square feet of usable space. So by the time you take away the entry, because you can't do anything with that, and the bathroom. Uh, but anyway, that, that's what we're thinking. And right now we have the stairwell closed off, both of the outer doors and the inside door. That door is not quite that wide. That's been another problem is we have, our doors are really 36 inches wide. Okay. Uh, would you have questions? Yeah, there's there any questions for Ms. Lynette. I've just got one and I've been wanting to get over there and not. Right. Um, have y'all been there? Y'all have been around town? Yes, I have. Why? Because it's actually a museum, right? They've turned it into a museum, yes. Uh, I've been up there to some of their programs. I get a, a invitation from the Laffey Brothers every time they meet. They still have a historical society and a uh, historical commission. You know, the societies preceding the commissions, which were certified by the government in uh, 73, 1973. I've been over there and got some funds there issues with their ADA. Oh, okay. Well, as I recall, Don might recall it too. They had a ramp going up to the front. I don't know. And we still have ADA issues and we're going to continue to, although we've had some thoughts on that. Yeah. that we've talked about that. Uh, still researching. We, we definitely discarded the south side. South side won't work. The east side could possibly work with a long ramp, but that's lots of dollars of concrete. And then we're looking at going straight up with a, a little ramp straight up. Those three steps in front are crumbling. So they need, there needs to be, we need a little landing there where someone in a wheelchair, now I think we could easily make it where someone could step up, but someone in a wheelchair might be a little more difficult thing. But anyway, we're working on that. We do not have a final solution. Did that answer your question? Yeah. I'm, I, I want to get over there in Brownwood and see what they got going with theirs. And and uh, okay. I've, I've said it before. I'll say it till, till okay. I'm out of here. I would I would really like to see it accessible to the public. If, if there's any. Oh, I left out something. All right. What we would do in this case is set up a calendar that the historical commission would uh, work. Like if somebody wanted to use it for a meeting or something, it worked kind of like the senior center over, center over there. They would have to schedule it ahead of time. We would not, I at this point, I do not wish to keep it open eight hours a day or something like that. But they could schedule it and use these rooms. Uh, For meetings and whatever. Yeah. You know, make a calendar. How do you feel about that? I just think anything use of it is good. Yeah, I do too. The more the more people that can see it, because it is part of those kind of history, a yes, very big part. And the Parton family, of course. Yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, but I think even like yesterday, um, you know, we kind of got a taste of it. Uh, there were people meandering all over downtown Delaware. I'm sure. Actually, not something to do. Sure, some of them would have loved to have gone in that jail. 
glad and for a lot of things that these gentlemen have opened. I don't think people were creating habits that were just not in front of the bed. Yeah, good reason. Right. At the museum, there was a lot of when we when we started the remodel, there was stuff in there from the old chamber. Yes. There was a ball and chain and different things like that. And I think it all got taken to the museum. I mean, if you needed to bring some stuff back, it's down at the museum. Well, you're not gonna have enough space to bring too much stuff. Right, I know. But... And not too much stuff out of your basement or what. Yeah, and when we talk about some old photos too for the on the walls and whatnot. Yeah. Well, a few. A few. A few. There's not, if you look, there's not much wall space yeah. really for painting stuff. Yeah. But I do have a 42 inch uh, TV screen, and I don't know if we have TV outlets or not. Do we have TV outlets? Yeah. Probably not. Well, it, everything's today is Wi Fi type thing, so. Okay. Are you talking about for a slideshow? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I have a screen and the state historical commission has many, many programs. Yeah. Also the Alamo, all that you can show, you know, videos of, of different kinds, YouTube's, all kinds of things that you can use that if we use this room as a little theater to uh show programs at specific times, not all the time. Okay. Okay, any other questions for Ms. Lynetta? Anything else you need to comment on, Lynetta? Well, I'm right. looking at one of the things. Okay. This blue is not going to be immediate. Oh, not tomorrow? <laughs> well, I'm ready, I'm ready. Well, with, uh, one issue came up is the bathroom but not the next door. Which that doesn't bother some of them. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's one of the issues. I think. And we're still waiting for lot pictures inside the time era. Time well, we're working on the lighting. We don't have lighting. Light pictures? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, there's not lights in there. Yeah. So this is not going to happen tomorrow. But yeah. it's, well, next next few months, uh, maybe summer, sometime. So probably. they they didn't have a whole lot. Of have to spend, you know, yeah. been there. They didn't have a whole yeah. lot of life back in eighteen eighty eight, did you? Exactly. Didn't have doors back then. So, okay. Any other comments, questions? Okay, uh, I'll make a motion that uh, I'm moving the Mills County Historical Commission to the eighteen eighty eight jail in the near future. Yeah, I made a motion, second by Commissioner Horton. Any other discussion? All those in favor of moving the historical commission to the 1888 jail in the near future, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Number nine, consider an actual proposal from Pablo uh, not, not Davila, right? Davila. No, she, I got Davila. correct. Davila. 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 For the 1888 jail. A guy, you might come up here. Uh, we got in our packet, folks. Some uh, a quote from Pablo for twenty five thousand dollars, and I will read this. For what you said about the mortar work, uh, work beginning to work in June the first. He could start even earlier than that. He told us three to four weeks to do the project. He'd have two to three workers on hand, and part of this uh, bid includes him having paid for the sixty five foot boom lift. Now, one thing uh, caveat to this: assuming we approve this. He would like to be able to draw 50% of the total cost to help pay for getting that boom lift up front. Am I correct on that guy? I believe that's what I've been told and understood from him. Or possibly. Yeah, I, I haven't talked yeah. to him on that. Yeah. And is there anything else I've left off on this? Yeah, I, I'd like to add that um, the bid that we got from Fred, the guy at Fredericksburg wanted $50,000. And if you look at the bottom three feet of, of the jail, is the style changed because all the mortar above had kind of a rounded style to it. So the guy there said that he didn't have the tool to do that and it was a lost art and so forth. Anyhow, Pablo Davila said, no, he has the tool and he can restore it exactly like it was. So 
it's not a thing of taking all the mortar out. He's just replacing the mortar that's that's gone or missing or it's it's, it's uh, it needs to be replaced. Also, he will do the bottom three feet and put it back to where it's supposed to be, and for half the price. And, so, and, uh, and Commissioner, as Lynette alluded to, we do have a requirement through the state being a state a historical landmark, National Registry, Antiquities Landmark too. Maintain the outside of this building. Yeah, I, uh, I just went to the Texas Historic Commission Real Places Conference last week in Austin, and I and I talked to some people there. Uh, they were also doing projects similar to what we have, and um, it is it is a Texas historic landmark, and we do have an obligation to at least keep the building up. So. Uh, repairing the outside, which we, this is going to dry it in since it's already got a new roof, all the windows on the on first floor are done, and this would uh, go a long way into keeping the structure maintained. Um, I think once this is done, it will be good for a long time. Is the mission point water being on this part? That's a good question. I don't know. I can find out. I will say the thing that I didn't like about the situation is Pablo came to my office on Friday and had written up his own bid and signed it and submitted it to me. I gave it to I gave God a copy and I gave Joe a copy. And when he was called back to the courthouse to find this bid, which was created in the judge's office, and I'm not sure he understood what he was signing. Well, uh, I talked to this the second one, Summer. Uh, I talked to Gerald about this earlier, so sorry I didn't communicate well with you. That's what this other one had come well, up with. A contract, a vendor, should, a, a vendor should be submitting a bid when you're doing construction a bid what they're willing to do, and then it should be signed based on that, on what you're selling them to do. If, and then if you have somebody who has a language barrier here, they might say, I never agree to this. Well, I've read everything to him, and he said he understood. So. Gerald, any comments? Uh, I don't see a problem with what was done. I think there's an understanding of what he's going to do. With it. I yeah. don't. I don't think his bid included any warranty. Yeah, there's nothing regarding warranty on there. That's your question. No, no with, when, yeah. yeah, the discussion I had when we did the walkthrough, uh, we we talked about all of the repairs that he would do, what was needed, uh, matching the colors. Um, we, we covered all the details, but we did we did not talk about a warranty. Uh, Personally, I would get one. I mean, because you're most, most of your yeah, most of your construction, you're going to get a one year warranty. I mean, for for uh, if you have uh, material that fails or, or so, this gentleman's not going through any Bible word or anything like that. No, no. I understand that, but there's a warranty when you go through like tips and stuff. There's that backup security part of it. So we're not going that route. So is the Mr. Person local or is it? Yeah, he's from Cincinnati. Hey, Commissioner, I don't think there's any questions on that. We can sure table this, have them come back and put what kind of verbiage you want in there. The only, the only thing, thing is, that I've got, I guess. Issues or questions about it, he's wanting 50 percent up front for the left. Yeah, well, right. if he's talking about three to four weeks, he's talking about uh six thousand dollars as opposed to 12. Five. I'm not for paying for labor before it happens, mm -hmm. or okay. Yeah, that's a good comment. Yeah, the only thing that I would see that would be reasonable would be to uh put some upfront money for lift materials. Um, which is standard practice with some construction, but I I would not pay for labor up front. I mean, you can if you want to if this is going to be a long project, like six months, you can set up draws. But this is something that uh, he said he can he can get done in less than thirty days. Um, I mean, I work in construction after I leave here. This is normal to ask people to clean up. I mean, the guy you call, I know you great. Right? So. Yeah, I talked to him. I think it's fine because it's he he does that, but he also does all the firewood business up around here. So um, that's a totally different business. It's a totally different business, but I'm saying though he's he's yeah. 
He's been in the well, club. I, I can wish to get it in burger and make it real clear that he understands exactly what the fit is. Yeah. Um, he was. And I don't know if I'm good English to speak or not. Yeah. Do you think we need somebody to interpret for him? Well, if we make the court feel comfortable, we can. Uh, when I was talking to him, he seemed to understand everything we, we discussed. And we had a lot of back and forth conversation. Um, and he gave me a verbal bid on the spot. And I invited him to attend commissioner's court meeting this morning at nine. And he said he'd try to come. So apparently the, only, the only barrier that he had is when I, I asked him to draw up a proposal with uh, uh, a job scope and describing everything that's going to be done. And he said he would have to get. Um, that person, I don't know if it's his sister or, his, or his, I think it's his sister he's talking about. Did an email. To do the email. He, he, he didn't have a computer or something. But yeah, so yeah. Hard. So, and she's probably uh, speaks a lot better English than you. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, Commissioner, so, uh, y'all call if you got any doubts, I'd suggest we table and can come back. Well, we, we don't need to table this forever. We don't need no. this guy. If we don't get it done, yeah. You want to? I mean, I can I can talk to him if you want to put a stipulation on this or, or whatever to make sure that everything is understood and uh, make sure there is a job scope that describes exactly if it's if it's not in detail enough for you on that and uh, cover the warranty too. Well, what did he turn into? Well, this you you said he turned something in. Did his match this turn in? His turn in and this one? This one's done by the judge's office, yeah. correct? Well, this had just more detail added to it, and I took took it by Gerald to look at, which he said this looked good. The other part of I'm concerned is that with all the issues that we're talking about. Yeah. And then we have. Yes, we do have the money funded to do this. Yeah, and there'll still be enough money to cover the light fixtures and door. Okay. Commissioner's questions, discussion? I make a motion that we approve the proposal by Pablo Davila, D A V I L A, for the, um, what do you call that? Mortar, Mortar work. work on the 1888 jail. Along with a 50% down bid. At a bid proposal of $25,000 with 50% down for pre work. Okay. Motion has been made by Commissioner Williams for the uh, proposal from Pablo Davila for the 1888 jail, including a 50% down payment. Any other questions or discussion, Commissioners? Okay. I, I don't think it should be down in that way. Okay. All right. I'll call for a vote then. All those in favor of using the second. Second. Well, second. Second. Excuse me. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Ross. Excuse me. So we've got a motion and second. You know the discussion. All those in favor of using the quote from Pablo Davila of 1888 jail say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. One opposed. Motion carries. All right. Moving on. Number 10. Consider an act on materials and labor. The mutton monster sewage grinder replacement law enforcement center. Uh, guy, if you'll come up and uh, give us a little prep on this, please. Okay, so uh, part of Texas on the camp. Yeah, this is this is law enforcement center. This is the name of it. it's it's a sewage grinder. Brand name on it is Muffin Monster. Muffin Muffin Monster. It's got a little green man on there too. It's in the, anyhow. So uh, part of Texas mechanical contacted me, Rusty Roberts. He said that the uh, Muffin Monster will be shipped from California on the 12th, which is Friday. And as soon as it gets here, they are ready to install it. Uh, so we're looking at 
next week's of the time. And also, there's also going to be labor included to the commissioners for installing this thing of three to five thousand dollars. Well, correct? it's the, the 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 equipment itself, the machine itself is twenty seven eight. Or and this eight. is a machine, not um, a part. No, this is the entire unit. Okay. This is the this this motor is a sealed motor. Okay, and they're expensive. I mean. It's, so I looked up the blueprints, looked up the specs on it. This thing is designed to run 24 seven. It's never supposed to shut off. So however long the law enforcement centers have been open, that's how long it's running. And it's still running. They've got it running off and on, six on, six off, which is really not good for it, but that's all the best we could do to keep it going without it just shattering or whatever. But um, so, I, I talked to Rusty Roberts on this. He called and talked to the people, to the company that built this to make sure that everything is uh, what it's supposed to be as far as the specs. And he said, yeah, that's what it's supposed to do. I was of the opinion that it shouldn't run all the time. He said, no, that's what the company said it needs to run all the time. And that's what it states in the blue run too, that it needs to get that so, in the specs. Um, so I would I would recommend that when the budget comes up, talk about thirty thousand dollars for this thing, including the labor. Um, for how many years is law enforcement center been? Eight years. But divide thirty thousand by eight and start putting some money back for the next one. So that's yeah, and they're going to last. I don't know. And, and again, there's going to be a few more labor charges for getting this installed. So it's twenty-seven thousand, right? The twenty-seven thousand is just for the motor, for the, yeah. for the equipment. This is this is the motor grinder. It's all it's all one piece. And we even talked about taking and just rebuilding the motor. And this it's it's a sealed motor. It would cost more to rebuild that motor than just buy the unit. So there's a few, again, we're thinking what, three to four thousand, maybe? Uh, Rusty Roberts said probably talking a, a couple of thousand dollars anyway. Two to three? Yeah. And commissioners, I visited this summer or last week. Uh, this would fall under non departmental expense, building improvement expense, which we do have the money to cover that approximate $30,000 deal for the sheriff's department from this muffin grinder or whatever it's called, muffin monster. Yeah. Um, Summer and I had a conversation on that. Uh, uh, the building improvement fund we had earmarked for lots of stuff. things to get that courthouse, yeah, to courthouse repairs. Um, so after we had a conversation, and I had a conversation with the sheriff that uh, I mean, obviously, this takes precedence, you have to have it, you can't, you can't just run that jail without sewage grinders. So um, I can put some some of the repairs that wanted to get done that we got here marked the courthouse. If necessary, I can put it off till the next budget cycle. Mm -hmm. too, but, uh, well, I think this is a top priority. Yeah, yeah, I can make whatever adjustments. Yeah, I think this is top priority for the law enforcement center. So, yeah, sheriff, uh, anything we need to add to this or anything? Sheriff, cool. Okay. okay. All right, commissioners, any other questions? So we're going to take all, yeah, because they don't have it under theirs at all. Mm -hmm. The building, their maintenance is down to five thousand mm -hmm. dollars to get them through the rest. And so what is in that original that account that's left guy that you're talking about, huh? Eighty five thousand. Okay. But that includes what we need to do on the Ford house. So what are you pulling off of this that you're not that you're not gonna do? We've got a lot of concrete work. We have steps out here. Um Sidewalk is busted up on the east side. Uh, we've got, well, we've got a drain put in down by the uh, handicap entrance. We've, we've got a wall down in the summer's office. It's uh, 
we've got to put a moisture barrier on that wall. So these are just some of the things. Uh, we just got all the new doors, uh, entrance doors done. So that was a big issue. And uh, we had all the windows and everything done last year. On those doors we're talking about, were they were worrying about a warranty. Were they under a warranty? Yes. And we got them fixed for. I've had to call them back a couple of times. Okay, Commissioner, any other questions? Okay. Did I hear a motion for the number 10 on the materials and labor for the muffin monster? I'll make a motion that we approve the materials and labor for the Muffin Monster replacement in the Law Enforcement Center. Second. And I made a motion. Second's been made by Commissioner Head. The end of discussion. All those in favor of approving the materials and labor for the Monster Monster, which is the sewage grinder, the Law Enforcement Center, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Moving on, number 11 is consider an act on accepting 8,000 cubic yards of rack from textile for all four precincts to be placed in precinct one yard. Carlos uh, Reyes is here. Good morning, Carlos. You want to come up here and uh, enlighten us on what all is going on, please? I brought this to the court several times already, and and I don't think we're all on the same page, and I'd ask Carlos to come up too and talk to the court about it. So. So uh, every year I have a material budget, we allot, I think, $13,798 for material as a county assistance program. Uh, most of the year, it's always been a uh, flex space, manufactured flex space. Uh, this year and last year, we used what we call wrap, uh, reclaimed asphalt materials from the roadway. Uh, we were going to have a big project on 84 West, which is from the Brown County line. To the traffic T out there where 183 and 84 will be we'll go just past it by Oak Creek Road. It's going to accumulate around 33,000 cubic yards of material. Out of that, we've got to stage it along that way for the trucking. There'll be one just south of the county line, 8,000 cubic yards will be there. There'll be two locations now at Pompey Creek. The next one will be at Browns Creek. Uh, due to the trucking and trying to get it all lined out. And then I think I had some questions on the precinct where it was located and it hadn't been approved yet. So we had to change locations. So it's going to be at Brown Street right now, unless it changes and then we'll move it to the, the precinct. It's more of a centralized location for y'all. But uh, if you have any questions on that. Uh, How many total yards, Carlos, were you going to receive? Because at one time I asked for. I thought 8,000 would be going into the district. We're going to split it up around 8,000 at each location. When can we get that material? Well, as soon as we get it measured. Out here on the highway also. On the highway at each, whatever location will be here, we can just go measure and then we can give you however much you need at that location. Up to 13,798. Yeah, 13,798. What happens to the rest of it? How It'll it? be there at the stage. And then for you, if for the next three years you're probably going to be getting wrapped, so it's going to that thirty three thousand is going to just sit there, and you can use it, you can purchase it, or we can give it to you as a finance system every year. Usually, that's what takes place. I think that's what they all did at Modern that it was given back that you yeah. you can get that material. And that's the only reason I want to take the thirty thousand off on the minutes because I thought we were going to have more than that. And I wanted to have 8,000 in my yard so we could, y'all can tell them like we've always done state material. It's always been delivered to precinct one yard. And y'all might use the route and might not, but I think it's good for us to have the route. Sure. And that's the reason that, that I bought it to the court this way. So, okay. And, and Carlos, would you say maybe they're going to be starting next month or two? Next week. Oh, next week. We're going to start trying to look into it starting next Monday. If not that Monday, the following. Okay. okay. If the court does not approve this, is that not correct? Then you have a location yes. that you can go with it. Yes. Okay. Well, so the way it sounds to me, you've already got the locations. You're just, if, if we approve this 
we're adding another location. We had that location on the books to begin with because we've always taken or delivered material at that location. So we just used that. And then uh, I think Commissioner Wright had just mentioned that it hadn't been approved yet. So we had to scramble and try to find a, another location just in case. Is this what you gave sent to the judge? Is it? Yes. Uh, is that my yard location on yes. the last two and last two? Yes. I don't know if y'all have ever seen that. But what? What? I don't know what you're talking about. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. You can send a letter to the judge. And there's a copy of the letter, and it gives you the location of where your material is all within. Well, we asked about that letter last time, and. and I, Yes, I didn't have the letter. I I went to Carlos and requested it, and so y'all can see it. That was one of the things I wanted to bring to the court. Are they paying that at twenty dollars a yard? Just eight thousand period. That's what they value. They all, I believe, twenty. Carlos evaluation is twenty dollars a cubic yard. Yes, they're next door, and it is. That's what they kind of accumulate and process and all that is what they bring it to. So there'll be a lot of material left. Yes. That's kind of what I And then thought. eventually, when it's just sitting there, sometimes if you need more, sometimes they give you an offer or they sell it to the commissioners or precincts at $5. Will well, they sell that material to anyone besides the commissioner? Right now, it's, 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 we it's, do it for the county. Sure. Well, I think it's a good deal for Mills County to get whatever we can, but appreciate uh, work with y'all. Yeah, this is what we do every year. Well, I mean, I, I know it's a little late. It sounds like y'all are already on the board going on, but this this letter was in December the 13th, and we're just now got it on the agenda. I just got it. Kind of running behind, guys. Um, yeah, you can type those. You want to see the letter? Or I just you... read it. Yeah, I just read it. That's what I was saying. Okay. As long as y'all saw the letter, like I'm saying, I, I hadn't seen it either. I When I went out and y'all asked for more information, yeah. I went out to call us and ask, and uh, he made this available to me. So that's the reason I bought it. That is what I that was the official allotment that we were getting i thought that was just extra that's the way i was understanding well, it's, y'all it's really they're, they're yeah, yeah and so yard. but it's wrap and you're not going to get the uh the rock the rock like we usually do i mean i'm i'm fine so, with the wrap we're finding places for it uh it's something we can use i guess for two years i contacted brownwood and and I think they were at 10 or 12 then, and I'm like, but we can't pay that. Well, then finally they came back with a deal. That first file was at, at Pompey Mountain, which is probably one of your staging areas again, um, that the guy, I can't remember who it was, came back that they had to charge it out, but the county would not have to pay for it as an over a lot. So I'm like, yeah, sure. And then, of course, we've gotten the, the deal on 16, you know, and so. Let me, and if it works for y'all, um, to me, it's working, you know. Let me ask one work. question, uh, and uh, this may, you may not both know the answer to this, but since we have our own trucks now, can we get in line and help all that? Yeah, we have to talk to the contract. But if you've got your own trucks, then. You see what I'm saying? saying it? Yes, sir. You know how that stuff sets up as soon as you drop it on the Absolutely. ground. It should be nice to just go straight with it and look at our rating crust and ready to go. Yeah, you'd have to contact the contractor so you can get in line and then they fill you up. Contact me. I don't have a problem. I think that's a good idea because I, I don't see y'all coming all the way to my yard, and but I was going to divide it up where you could come to the yard. but. And I don't know where they're going to start at, Jason, on, on delivering this material. I believe they're going to start at the right there at Off Towers and move, move that's, to west, northwest. Okay. That, that's what's going to be right here in town anyway. We wouldn't have to double haul it if you wanted to do it that way. I don't I don't have a problem. Yeah, with again, that. we'd have to talk to the contractor on that. So. 
Okay. All right. Any other questions, commissioners? So is this worded correctly, this 8,000 cubic yards of wrap for TxDOT? Yes. That is. If, if it will go to Mills County Precinct 1, you will get around 8,000 cubic yards. If, we, if it doesn't go to my precinct, what will it go? Just on the southeast corner of Browns Creek on 8. Take it to the yard. And then you'd have to pick it up there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do I hear a motion on this, Commissioner? I make a motion that we accept the 8,000 cubic yards of RAP wrap, which is re reclaimed material from TxDOT for all four precincts to be placed and stationed at precinct one yard. Okay, motion has been made by Commissioner Williams to draw the 8,000 cubic yards of wrap. Second. Uh, second has been made by Commissioner Head. Any other discussion? All those in favor of approving the accepting 8,000 cubic yards of wrap, say aye. Uh, any opposed? Ayes have it. Carlos, thank you. Well, I'm working with you. Appreciate your help. Oh, okay, number 12, Commissioner's Request and Reports. Commissioner Wright, go ahead. It's uh, been a pretty pretty busy last few weeks with uh, everything we've been doing, and I know that uh, we've been blading a lot. We've... Uh, I went out and instead of going to the law enforcement center, what I did, way well, I, I I traveled all my precinct roads and and tried to keep up with the clips, and it was a pretty interesting deal. But uh, we've been filling potholes, uh, like I say, we've been uh, blading, and that's about what we've been doing. Like with mechanic work, we've done some work down the river. We've had some very bad potholes. I think the judge has been called about it a couple times, and We've got that fixed, but uh, our uh, mini excavator went down while we were down there. So, but anyway, I'm in the process of having it fixed. That's all we've been doing. Okay, Commissioner Head. Now we blade some roads. We did a little bit of shredding, and and uh, then we've done done some digging in the pit, trying to get. Hopefully, if for too long, we're going to start hauling. So, we've been just doing that. Okay. Uh, Travel, travel precinct, and of course went up Star and checked in with them, and traveled precinct. Met some uh, interesting, met some really nice people who came in for the clips, and uh, I think it was a pretty, pretty neat little deal. Yeah, from all over. Yeah, Commissioner yeah. Porter. Uh, I've been spot hauling around the pretty area, trying to get some big stuff over there, and. Uh, my intention is if it works out, we'll be moved back to the mulling area and try to get the grant stuff going before before it gets hot or something. Mm -hmm. and, uh, get those projects done and call something down there. So, uh, the tractor with the grinder, we're obviously supposed to get it April 1st. Uh, it's down. Harder to face as far as. Uh, got the other pull in there, thing, but they did not order certain things out. So now we're having to wait for about a bit of that stuff and going and getting the problem so we can get the pieces. Yeah. Okay, Commissioner Williams. Uh, Again, um, Clips is on the, the latest on the uh, what we did, but. Uh, uh, swinging bridge is back open at eight o'clock this morning. Uh, everything was good out there except for one incident. I think at three o'clock in the morning or something like that. And um, probably yes, and then had a little bit of alcohol to do with it. Um, but other than that, everything was great um, on the clip side. Uh, put a new culvert in on four hundred eight. Also bladed and did some. Hauling a material 408, 414, and 432. That's it. Okay. Number 13, County Judges Report. Uh, mainly eclipse. So uh, I, was, I was in and out of the law enforcement center this weekend. Uh, and special thanks to all the staff from Mills County Law Enforcement, Texas Department of Emergency Management, all the other support personnel, volunteer fire departments. Uh, as far as I know, we didn't really have any issues. Here, but, uh, uh, I came down to the courthouse yesterday morning. I uh, had a great group. I'm guessing probably 250 people here at the courthouse. 
Uh, Tom Guthrie and I walked around, visited people from all over the world, all throughout the United States, which is amazing. They found gold coins, and uh, they're very complimentary of the friendliness here. And that's where I witnessed the eclipse of the courthouse. And uh, like I said, I had a good group. Traffic afterwards was a little bad coming to the park down Fisher Street, but I, I didn't hear any of the traffic issues. Sheriff, did you? No, sir, it was moderate, but they cleared out pretty quickly. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we got through the clips, and again, thanks to all the many, many support staff and uh, everyone in the Law Enforcement Center for their hard work over the weekend. So that's all I got. Number 14, adjournment commission ride. Motion. Motion to adjourn with commission ride. I'll second. 